friends, welcome to the ARC Sunday School at home. My name is Mrs. Moriak, and trust me, we're going to have a blast today. Let's start with a song. Today we're discovering we can trust God. That's our Bible point today. So every time you hear the words, we can trust God, point up and say, trust God. Let's try that together. Trust God. We can trust God. Trust God. God is always at work. He has a plan for our lives, and it's a good one. Today we will celebrate that we can trust God. Trust God. Let's meet our Bible memory buddy, Ray, the giant manta ray. How much do you know about manta rays? Let's find out with a this or that challenge. You'll hear two fun facts about a giant manta ray. It's up to you to decide which is true, this fact or that. Why must manta rays keep moving all the time? Is it so they don't fall asleep or so they can keep breathing? Here's how to vote. Pretend to fall asleep to vote for so they don't fall asleep or take a deep breath to vote for so they can keep breathing. So make a drum roll with your thighs or the floor. The answer is it's so they can keep breathing. Let's watch a video about Ray, the giant manta ray. Take a look under the big blue and you'll see me. I'm Ray and I'm a giant manta ray. We're one of the coolest creations God made because we sort of fly, not through air, but through the water. Like I said, I'm a giant manta ray, and I really live up to my name. Giant mantas can grow to about 30 feet across. That's bigger than four grown-ups lying down in a line. You won't see us hold still very long, 
we keep moving through the water all the time. <laughs> Maybe some of you like to keep moving too. Moving keeps me breathing. The water slides over my gills and gives me the oxygen I need to stay alive. <sighs> In the Bible, a man named Abram kept moving too. He moved because God told him to. God made a promise to Abram. God said Abram would have a big family, as many grandkids as there are stars in the sky. Now that's a big family. Abram trusted and believed God's plan for his life. You can trust God too. In the Bible book of Psalms, chapter 33, verse four, it says, for the word of the Lord holds true, and we can trust everything he does. We can trust God. He's way bigger than me. Sometimes you may feel like you're just floating around without a plan. You might worry about what will happen next in your life. You can trust that God will guide you and give you what you need to keep going. And when you aren't sure whether to choose this or that, talk to God. And when you move to new places, God promises to always be with you. You can simply glide along because He'll carry you through. Ah! We can trust God. is God's true story of love. The Bible was written by people who wrote just what God wanted them to say. Our Bible memory verse is Psalm 33, verse 4. Let's say the verse together. I'll say a line, and then you repeat after me. For the word of the Lord holds true, and we can trust everything he does. We can trust God. Trust God. What he says is true, and he has the whole world in his hands. Let's sing and celebrate that song together. <laughs> I like that jazzed up version of that oldie but goodie song. 
So let's meet a man who trusted God even when he didn't understand exactly what God was doing. His name is Abram, and oh, wait, here he is now. So let's wave to Abram. As you hear the story, do everything Abram does. All right, so Abram was getting up there in years. See how he's all hunched over? <laughs> See how he squints when he's looking around? We know he's rich because Abram has lots and lots of sheep. Everyone, let's hear your best sheep sounds. Ba, ba, ba. Perfect. One day, God told Abram to pack up and go to a land. God would show him. Listen to this. This is in Genesis, which is the first book of the Bible. It's Genesis 12, verses 1 through 3. The Lord said to Abram, Leave your country, your family, and your relatives, and go to the land that I will show you. I will bless you and make your descendants into a great nation. You will become famous and be a blessing to others. I will bless anyone who blesses you, but I will put a curse on anyone who puts a curse on you. Everyone on earth will be blessed because of you. That sounded great. God would bless Abram. That means he liked Abram and he had special plans for him. And by the way, God likes all of you and has good plans for you all too. Go ahead and give your neighbor a pat on the back. Oh, well, back to Abram. Abram trusted God, so he pulled out a suitcase and threw in his underwear and his sandals and his robes. Oh, oh wait, uh, you'd better fold those, right? I mean, you don't want him to get wrinkled. He also tossed in his tents and his tools and his toothbrush and his cooking pot. And don't forget your bowling trophy. And he even took his family. He thought about tossing in his sheep, but that would be silly. They could just walk. And boy, whew. Did they walk? So as you can see, Abram is trudging back and forth, trudging to the left, trudging to the right. God is leading, but Abram doesn't understand where they're going. The sheep are following along, so bye to your left. Uh, now Abr Abram's trudging to the right, uh, bye to your right, sheep. Abram looks so tired, he can hardly move. And the sheep are so tired that when they baa, it sounds like they're about to fall over. Everyone, let's hear some tired baas. At last, Abram stops and sets up camp, then sits down. Let's find out where he stopped. I'm going to read aloud from Genesis 12, verse 6. Abram went as far as the sacred tree of Morah in a place called Shechem. The Canaanites were still living in the land at that time. There in the land of Canaan, Abram, his wife, his nephew, and all his sheep stretched and yawned and settled in for the night. Almost at once, there was soft snoring in the air. Then God appeared to Abram. Enough snoring! <laughs> Here's what God said. Verse 7. But the Lord appeared to Abram and promised, I will give this land to your family forever. Abram then built an altar for the Lord. Abram's trust in God paid off. God promised that he'd give Abram and his family that land someday. That sounded great to Abram. So he built an altar to thank God. Then the journey continued. He and his sheep continued traveling for a long time. Abram kept marching in place for a while. Oh, Abram, you keep marching in a place for a while, and I'll jump ahead to the next part. God had promised to make a great nation out of Abram. 
But that was years ago, and Abram still didn't have any kids. Sometime later, God spoke to Abram again. Let's see what he said. This is Genesis 15, verses 1 through 3. Later, the Lord spoke to Abram in a vision. Abram, don't be afraid. I will protect you and reward you greatly. But Abram answered, Lord, all-powerful, you have given me everything I could ask for except children. And when I die, Eliza and Damascus will get all I own. You have not given me any children, and this servant of mine will inherit everything. Abram didn't quite understand God's plan, did he? Let's look at some stars. Let's see you all shine by raising jazz hands. So stick your hands up and make some twinkling stars. God told Abram to go outside and look at the stars. That's how many descendants you'll have, God said. And Abram looked at all the glittering stars. His heart was so happy. Abram believed in God. Abram trusted God. And we can trust God too. Trust God. Trust God. Give yourself a hand. And let's give Abram a hand. Bye, Abram. Today, we are going to use five craft sticks out of your at-home pack. You're going to need some glue or use the glue dots that are in your pack. You're going to need to form them in a shape of a star. Your star will help you remember God's promise to Abram. God told Abram he would have as many families as members as there are stars in the sky. That's a big family. We can trust God to keep his promises. I'll start the timer, but feel free to pause your video to allow more time to create your star. There are also written directions attached to your week one flyer. dries, decorate your stars, however you like, using crayons or markers. If you could name a star, hmm, what would you call it? Be sure to put your finished star in a place where you can remember God's promises to Abram. You know, we can trust that God is who he says he is and that he'll do what he says he'll do. What's something you're trusting God for in your life right now? Why don't you share this with someone in your family? Remember, sometimes the big picture is not clear right away. That's how it was with Abram. God didn't promise to give Abram everything he'd ever wanted exactly when he wanted it, but God did promise to give him land and a special family. God promises us things too. God promises to love us and always be with us. And through Jesus, God promised to give us forever life with Jesus. Those things are amazing. We can trust God, trust God and his promises. Our Bible memory buddy friend, Ray, and you have one in your pack here, he reminds us that we can trust God. 
You have a race sticker or stuffed pet inside your at-home pack to help you remember to trust God throughout your week. Did you know that Jesus eventually came from Abram's family? In Genesis 12, verse 3, God told Abram all the families on earth would be blessed through him. Jesus' birth made that promise come true. You and your family can read and talk about our friend Jesus. In this week's Take It Home Flyer, after you finish, you can make it fly. Let's pray together. God, you are amazing like all the stars in the sky, and you are beyond my comprehension, and yet I trust you. Thanks for guiding me through your plans for my life. Amen. Let's sing and celebrate that we can trust God with one last song. Bye. See you next time.